right, I'm going to go ahead and do a series in regards to um, man's best friend, the dog, okay? <laughs> so I'm going to um, incorporate a couple of different references, actually a few different references, um, and explain how God, okay, felt about dogs. Did God hate dogs or did he, you know, want to insult dogs or put dogs down or anything like that? No, absolutely not. Dogs are a creation of God, obviously. But the word dogs is uh, used in the Bible several different times to describe a certain race of people, okay, or a certain group of people for those who don't like the word race and for those who don't want to deal with that word. So let's go ahead and, um, well, one of the uh, books that I'm going to use is called Sargon the Magnificent, and it was written in 1927 by Mrs. Sidney Bristow. Um, I like this book. It's actually very, very informative, and it is filled with a lot of references prior to 1927. The reason why it's just a good idea to look towards um, older writings and older teachings, not that they're all 100% correct, of course, uh, is because this was prior to this group of people uh, corrupting everything they get their hands on today. Okay, so let me go ahead and read a couple of references that are um, quoted or cited in her book. Um, and uh, I suggest that people go to the site that I am going to put inside of my index to uh, read the book online for free. So a couple of references cited, uh, Josephus, Worship of the Dead, Hebert Lectures, Legends of Babylonia and Egypt, Children of the Sun, Professor Sassi, Phoenicians, Origins of Britons, Biblical Antiquities of Philo, The Origins of Bible Traditions. I will also be using George Lamza's, a couple of different books written by George Lamza, and I will be using uh, Charles A. Wiseman, Not of One Blood, um, and I might use Brad Scott's definition of the word or the name of Nimrod. Now, I want to say another thing in regards to um, Sargon the Magnificent. There have been a couple of people that have uploaded um, in regards to Sargon the Magnificent or Sargon of Akkad, um, and they have basically pointed to Nimrod. Um, so let me go ahead and give a little bit, bit of an example of people who do this, who only go as far back as a certain time. Um, so when you are being pointed to a particular person such as Nimrod, you would have to then consider, was Nimrod uh, part of the Garden family? Was he part of that whole, um, those events that occurred uh, after the garden, after Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? And of course the answer would be no. Okay, I'll give you another um, example of people who do this. Um, there are the quote truthers who like to point at Adam Weisapt. Okay, we all know who they are. They have been pushing Adam Weisapt and the Jesuit agenda for many, many years now, and uh, people still buy those lies. So I will be using Sargon the uh, Magnificent, as I said, but it does not point at Nimrod. It actually points at Cain, which is the correct um, explanation in regards to different religions that were spread all over the world. Okay, so um, now we have talked about different cultures, different religious beliefs, different ritualistic practices, um, geographically speaking, culturally speaking, and historically speaking, and they all go back to not Nimrod, but Cain. And I'm going to prove that. So let's go ahead and go to the Holy Bible, and um, let's go ahead and look at the word dog, since we're talking about uh, man's best friend. And like I said, I'm not picking on uh, the dog, and I love dogs. However, um, 
God used dogs to describe a certain group of people, like I just said, because dogs are considered to be, in the Holy Bible, an unclean animal, unfortunately. Okay? Um, now, I'm going to go ahead and go to the Blue Letter Bible. I'm at my fifth minute right now. Prior to me reading um, Sargon the Magnificent, I am going to be um, referring to um, the Blue Letter Bible, but it's going to be the definition of um, Cain. Okay, what the Blue Letter Bible feels about Cain. So let's go ahead and read um, what the Blue Letter Bible has to say in regards to Cain. And then after I read this, I am going to um, start on my number two. So let's go ahead and read it together. Cain's wife. This has to be one of the most frequently asked questions we get here at Blue Letter Bible. More likely than not. Cain married one of his unnamed sisters, or perhaps even a niece. Adam and Eve likely had many children by the, by the time Cain uh, of Cain's exodus to the land of Nod, and whether Cain had already married or acquired his wife post-exile. It would not require any interpretive gymnastics to understand his wife as having been a close relative. Just because no sisters are directly indicated does not mean that Adam and Eve had no daughters at the time of Abel's murder. A child of patriarchs was not usually mentioned unless he fulfilled one of two narrative functions. He was was integral to one of the stories within the Jewish mythos, or he was to become the progenitor of a nation. If either of those two functions were not fulfilled, a child's existence was rarely even indicated, especially if that child was female. Therefore, it is really no great shock to find that Cain married a woman who earned no previous mention in scripture. Uh, wrong. Okay, so I am at my seventh minute. This is uh, given to us by the Blue Letter Bible, and it is made up information that is completely false and completely against the Holy Bible. Okay, so let's go ahead and start number two, and I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to explain where I left off why. 